Chapter 11 Lawton woke late in the morning and lay smiling up at the wooden ceiling of his caravan. He studied the rays of light streaming through a crack in the curtains. It reminded him of home, the mornings when he'd stirred before the others to catch the rising sun. But the memories didn't hurt. There had been times when Lawton missed his family, and he still missed Ver, but many years had passed. He liked his new life and never looked back with regret. Lawton had a quick bath in a tub of chilly water out back. He shared the caravan with Virus and Meletta, and although the magician was easygoing in most ways, she was strict when it came to cleanliness. She insisted that Lighten wash every third day. He had grumbled a lot to begin with, but now he didn't mind. After Lighten had dried himself, he dressed and reported for duty. People were already dismantling the tent, supervised by Mr. Tall. Lighten helped stack and move chairs, then joined in the rolling of the canvas an arduous but enjoyable task in which most members of the circus took part. By midday, everything was packed away neatly, and the troop took to the road in their horse-drawn carriages. Lighten rode up front with Virus, enjoying the scenery from his seat beside the ventriloquist. Virus never forced words from the mouths of his friends. He kept his special talent for the stage. He was a quiet man at times like this, saying little, focused on the horse. When Lighten tired of the scenery, he withdrew and asked Roletta to teach him some tricks. He didn't have any freakish abilities, so he could never be a star at the Cirque de Freak, but he had a quick hand and a keen eye, and was able to copy any trick once he'd seen it performed slowly. Roletta said he could carve out a career for himself as a magician if that was the path he wished to take. Lighten knew he wouldn't, his heart was set on becoming a vampire general, but it was fun to play at being a magician's apprentice. Meletta ran him through a few of the card tricks that he'd already mastered, then taught him some new moves. He was able to slide cards around swiftly between his fingers and make them disappear and reappear at will. Meletta was sure that he would soon overtake her in this discipline if he stuck with it. He was a natural at cards. When it came to locks, chains and handcuffs, Lighten already outshone his tutor. Meletta had never seen anyone pick a lock as swiftly or easily as the orange-haired teenager. There wasn't much she could teach him about escapology. Once he'd learned the basics, he had sprinted ahead of her. Lighten strolled between caravans later, visiting the friends he had made since linking up with the Cirque du Freak. Some performers were vain and didn't mingle much. Jervil and Rax were especially pompous, but most were welcoming, as were the crew. Lighten had never been more relaxed than he was here. If he hadn't felt the itch to explore the night, he would have been delighted to put down roots and call the circus home. He wound up in Mr. Tor's caravan. The owner of the travelling show was a solitary man. During their long hours of travel, he kept to himself. He didn't like physical contact with other people, and hadn't even shaken Seba's hand when the vampire dropped off Lighten. The pair were old friends. Mr. Tor had received his visitor warmly, and they'd shot tales for hours. But the giant preferred not to touch those he mixed with. Although Mr. Tor didn't usually encourage visits, he had told Lighten to call in on him as often as he liked. Perhaps it was because Lighten was Seba's assistant, or maybe he had seen something in the orange-haired youth that interested him. Either way, the pair spent a couple of hours together most days. Mr. Tor was working on a Levisha doll when Lighten knocked and entered. The oversized man had enormous hands, but his fingers were even nimbler than Lighten's. Using his fingernails and a tiny sharpened piece of glass, he could make adjustments to a doll or statue that others could only see with the aid of a magnifying glass. Mr. Tall passed light in a small set of jars, filled with paint, and he set to work on the pieces awaiting his attention. They often worked in silence like this, but on some days Mr. Tall asked Lighton about his past, or told him stories of Seba, Paris, and the other vampires. Lighton always listened intently, absorbing every word, eager to learn anything that he could about the clan. Seba sends you his regards, Mr. Tall said after a while. He is doing well, and has almost made it to Vampire Mountain. No broken legs yet. The pair shared a chuckle. Even though he wasn't a vampire, Mr. Tall was able to bond mentally with members of the clan. When two vampires bonded, one was able to find the other, no matter where in the world they were. They could also trade basic messages. Lighten didn't know how Mr. Tall was able to bond with vampires, but he had no intention of asking. Mr. Tall was even more secretive than Seba Nile. You hunger to follow in his footsteps, Mr. Tor noted. Aye, Lighten nodded, sighing happily at the thought of making the trek to the legendary man. It's a hard life, Mr. Tor said. Long, perilous, dark. 
you would have a much more rewarding career if you remained with us and worked on your stage skills. Lydon hadn't told Mr. Tall about his lessons with Moletta, but he wasn't surprised if the circus owner knew. Why do you wish to become a vampire? Mr. Tall asked. Lydon paused, then frowned, and admitted, I'm not sure. It was the question he had never asked himself. He'd just followed his instincts since that first meeting with Saber in the crypt. Do the centuries appeal to you? Mr. Tall pressed. Many humans yearn to lead long lives. Do you want to extend your natural time and live 400 years? 500? More? Lan shrugged. I'm not too bothered. Is it the power? You will be stronger than any human when you are blooded. You can force people to do as you wish, to respect and obey you. Saber, Lighton stopped. He'd been about to tell Mr. Tall of Saber's decision not to become a vampire prince, but on reflection he wasn't sure if he should. That might not be something that Saber wanted to share, even with his closer friend as Hibernius Tall. Saber told me a vampire shouldn't seek power, Lighton said instead. We leave humanity behind when we're blooded. He said the generals take a dim view of any vampire who tries to set himself up as a lord of humans. So why do you hunger to join the clan? Mr. Tall asked again and looked up. His gaze was dark and burning. Lighton wanted to look away. He felt oddly afraid, but he didn't break eye contact. I don't know, Lighton said. It's just something I have to do. If I could explain it, I would, but Mr. Tall grunted. A victim of destiny, he muttered, and his head turned slightly as if he was sniffing the air. Lighton realised that the caravan had come to a halt. Mr. Tall always led the way, guiding his troop from one place to another. He had a faithful piebald horse, but rarely sat up front to direct her. He was able to transmit his thoughts to the beast and steer the caravan from within. Lighton glanced out of the window. They had come to a crossroads. The horse had started to take a right turn, but now she hesitated, her head flicking to the left. To an outsider, it would have looked like she was unsure of which path to take, but Lighton knew it was actually Mr. Tall who was caught between two minds. There are some in my life who serve destiny unconsciously, Mr. Tall said softly. Their lives are mapped out for them, but they are unaware of it. I envy their ignorance. I, alas, know far too much. Others make of life what they wish. They are free to choose and go their own way, or that on a whim. I envy their freedom. I, unfortunately, am bound to never make such a loose choice. I see the paths of other people sometimes. Mr. Tall's voice was now a whisper, and his eyes were distant. Lighton wasn't sure if the tall man even knew he was speaking. I try not to, but on occasions I cannot avoid it. It's tempting to make a change, to interfere, to avert the pain that one can see lying in wait for others. Destiny is a tower of cards. Nudge one just an inch, and everything stacked on top comes crashing down to be able to help people, but to live in terror of the dire consequences. Mr. Tall's face darkened. His features seemed to vanish, then cleared. He smiled thinly at Lighton. Sometimes I think too much, and say even more. Ignore me, my young friend. I should stick to what I am good at, running a freak show and carving dolls that nobody wants to buy. As Lighton stared at the mysterious owner of the Cirque du Fruit, not sure what to say, Mr. Tall lowered his head and concentrated on the doll. Outside, the horse's head steadied, and it took the right turn. Without hesitation, it followed its original route, carrying Lighton forward into the darkness and damnation of destiny.